Workout number two. Craig is going to explain the goals and objectives of this workout. In workout number two, we're going to progress from where we were in workout one. In workout one, we did a lot of mobility and stability work on the ground and we grooved the basic strength movement patterns for upper and lower body. In workout number two, we're going to do a more advanced version of that mobility and stability work on the ground and then we're going to load those strength movement patterns to get a little bit stronger and do a little bit more volume on the strength and we're going to end with a functional strength movement patterns, things that you might encounter in the field and ways that you'll have to move to help you better handle your adventure. Fit for Alaska, workout number two. For the first exercise in workout two, we're going to do the cat camel. First, we're going to position on all fours. You're going to have your hands directly below your shoulders, knees directly below your hips. And what we're going to do here is warm up the back. So we're going to go ahead and arch the back and look at the belly as you do that. Everything's rounded and then you're going to go up the other way, this way, you're going to round the back. And now here's where you arch it. So you're going to round it and arch it and he's going to do 10 repetitions of the cat camel each time not holding the position but going through the motion so keep going through it john and he's going to go through 10 repetitions here one and that's two good and as he's doing it you'll notice that he's moving he's from the pelvis here rounding and arching getting all the tissues of the back warmed up for the workout this is a great warm-up for any workout you'll notice his head is also moving and you don't want to forget that. A lot of times people will forget and not move the head with it, but that's all part of the spine connected. We want to make sure you do that. We're going to start on all fours and we're going to put your hands down on the, on the floor directly beneath your shoulders. We're going to have your knees off the ground now and then John is going to rock back until his heels are flat and he's going to have his head right between his shoulders. He's going to push through his heels as much as he can. Then he's going to rock forward, look up, get a nice arch through here, try to drop the shoulders as much as he can and then he's going to drive back again. He's going to do 10 of these, two, and that's three, and each time he does it, he's going to try to push a little further into his heels and get a nice big stretch through his arms and lats, through his ankles, and through his um, hamstrings. After he does 10 of these, we're going to hold that position in that downward dog position, and he's going to do ankle rockers. Here we're going to alternate pushes. He's going to drive that heel into the ground as much as he can to feel that stretch in his calves. That'll be 10 on each side for a total of 20 ankle rockers.
ankle rockers. For the rainbow, we're going to start in a kneeling position with hands on your head. John's going to have his hands on his head, and what he's going to do is he's going to go side to side. And this is going to help work some of that lateral flexion of the spine. Super important to get that mobility and flexibility through the rib cage and between the ribs and the pelvis. And what he's doing is we want to think about not just going down, but going up. Stretching the head up toward the ceiling and going up and over. So nice elongating the spine and going up and over. Really getting a big stretch as he does that. He's going to do 10 per side. For helicopter rotate and dip, we're going to work on more thoracic mobility and we're going to have John start with his hands on his head and on this one he's going to rotate as far as he can to the right or as far as he thinks he can. He's going to dip down to the side, come up to the same spot, rotate a little further, dip again, same spot, rotate a little further and dip. Then he's going to come to neutral and back the other way and dip. And that is one set. He's going to do four sets of that. Again, he's going to go. He's going to go a little further. He's going to go a little further. Then he's going to go to the other side. Back to neutral and back to the other side. Good. And that's two. So now he's going to go for uh, rep number three. And you'll notice that he's able to get a little further each time he does that dip. He's opening up lateral flexion and he's also getting rotation. So just by doing that dip, it opens up him up just a little bit more. And at first, you may only want to do two per side if you're still feeling a little uncomfortable getting all the way around. For thread the needle, John's going to come on to all fours and he's going to lift the right hand and reach all the way up, straight up to the ceiling, then all the way under until his shoulder comes down toward the ground. You're going to see him reach up again. That's one rep. We're going to do 10 reps per side. And the idea here is to really work on opening up that thoracic spine, that upper back, opening that up and also getting the shoulder stretched up posterior, the rear part of the shoulder, the part that's tight on most of us sitting at a desk for a long time. And after he does 10 of those on each side, we're going to go ahead and work on the other side. So as he goes through, if you want to get a little extra stretch, you can bring that shoulder down to the ground. So we'll do the other side. Watch how this goes. And if you notice, one side's a lot tighter than the other side. You can do extras on the side that is a little bit tighter. So John's going to reach all the way, fingertips to the ceiling, and then shoulder to the floor, nice and low. And he's following with his eyes. He's following all the way up and all the way down to make sure that he gets full rotation as much as he can through the shoulder, as well as you can see this shoulder that's not moving is getting, and the shoulder blade is getting a lot of motion as well and mobility.
other side. For the giant steps, John's going to get in push-up position. In this, the first move he's going to do is he's going to bring his right foot over to his hand and do a little lizard push-up. Good. Then he's going to switch. He's going to bring his left foot over, and that is one movement. Good. Now what he's going to do, if you cannot do that yet, start on your knees. You're going to bring your right foot up to your hand, do that same motion, kind of rock forward and bend the elbows. And the same thing on the other side. So John's going to demonstrate this in the push-up position, the more advanced version. He's going to do 12 total of the giant steps. So he goes ahead and goes, that's one. And then he goes to two. Every time he does it, you'll notice a nice big stretch to the hip flexors of that straight leg, which is super important. If you sit a lot, those hip flexors are tight. By the same token, if you sit in that 90 degrees position in a chair, you're not getting enough flexion through the hip and opening that up as much. So this also helps to do that. Stretches out the ankle, the calf, and stabilizes the shoulder and gets you in a real good position to get those extreme angles and those extreme motions you're going to need through the hips and ankles. For plank hip circles, we're going to go ahead and get in a push-up position. From this, now normally when we do the hip circles in the first workout, we were on our knees. We're going to go ahead and make this a little tougher, add a little more uh, core and joint and shoulder joint stability. John's going to go ahead and bring his knee up to the elbow and circle it around. Big circles work on flexion and extension through the hip, opening that up eight times. Once he does eight in one direction, he's going to go ahead and reverse that direction. Get those hip circles, open everything up, and work on stability at the shoulder joint as well. Then once he finishes that, eight, he's going to go to the other side, work both. If you notice one side is a little tougher to do than the other, go ahead and do a few extras after you rest on that side. So you'll notice that here he's really pushing around, trying to stabilize his back and not lift it too much. Work through the hip and go in both directions. Switch direction. Switch legs. Switch direction. rotations, what we're going to do is have you get on all fours. We're going to start by having both feet together and you're going to swing both feet to the right. You're going to take your right leg over the top and slide back until you're on your elbows. From here you're going to rock side to side ten times, five each way. What you're going to feel is a big stretch through your glutes and through your piriformis. And that muscle is extremely tight in most people. And it actually crosses the sciatic nerve and can create a pinching sensation that can go down the leg. Once you do that, you're going to go ahead and do some rotations. Now here we want to add some more rotational forces through the hips so that when you're out there, you're actually feeling that kind of force that you're working on here first so that when you're out there and you're moving and rotating and going up grades and you're able to actually prepare for it better. So once he's done five on each side, he's going to go ahead and bring the knees back in 
and swing both feet to the left. And then the foot goes, the left foot goes up and over, slides back, elbows down. He's going to feel that stretch. Now the stretch is on the right glute. He's going to go ahead and just rock back and forth five times each way. That lateral rocking, again, we're trying to add some motion through that stretch. So it's not just a static hold, that it's a more functional carryover to the real world when you're moving and rocking and walking. And now he's going to go ahead and add a rotational force from the upper body, from the top down. So we're getting different forces to go through that muscle that we're stretching. So you're not only mobile, but you're functionally mobile. Begin rotations. Switch legs. Begin rotations. stretching the short adductors or the groin muscles or the inner thigh. So John's going to start on all, on, on, on all fours, then he's going to bring the knees as far apart as he can, keeping the feet together. Then he's going to drop down to his elbows and gently rock forward and back ten times. As he's rocking, you'll notice he's moving through his hips, trying to really work on driving his hips back to get that nice motion. It's going to prepare him better for squatting and for moving into deep positions. Also going to stretch those long, those short adductors, those inner thigh muscles in motion so that when he's moving out there with a pack on, he's used to the stretching in a functional way with movement. and stretch the long adductors or the inner thigh muscles by starting on all fours like we did for hockey rockers and now we're going to go ahead and extend one leg completely. John's going to go ahead, actually John's going to come up on hands. So start on hands and I want you to drive your hips forward and back. It's going to get good. On this one you could be on hands because we really want you to accentuate that movement. You can do it better on your hands. Driving forward and back ten times and then after ten times you're going to switch to the other side. You'll notice his foot is as flat as possible so he can stretch the outer part of his ankle and he can work on the inner part of his thigh. He's going to go ahead and switch to the other side. Same thing, you're getting the shorter groin muscles on one side, the longer ones on the other side, and he's driving through his hips again, being able to get in those positions during movements. Switch legs. inner thigh raises, John's going to go ahead and get on his side. He's going to go onto his elbow, both legs straight, and he's going to bring the front leg, the top leg in front. He's going to grab onto the ankle, 
And what he's going to do is he's going to just isolate and lift this foot up, this leg up as high as he can, and then come back down. All those inner thigh muscles now are going to start working. So in the first phase of this uh, of this section, we did mobility. Now we're working on stability and activation. We're going to strengthen in those ranges of motion. So now John's going to go ahead and lift. He's going to do 20 lifts. It's not that hard, but over time, if you do 20, it starts to add up. We're going to do two rounds of this exercise, 20 on each side twice. So as he's lifting, it looks pretty simple and basic, but he's really activating those muscles and activating them in a way that they'll be able to stabilize him as he's walking on terrain that's going to be very Switch sides. We're going to go ahead and flip over to the other side. Let's go down to the elbow. Legs straight. Bring that top leg in front. Hand right hand on top, and he's going to go ahead and lift that left leg up and down, keeping it as straight as possible, and you'll see all those muscles on the inner part of the thigh are working. This is one you do not want to use ankle weights. You don't want to load it. You just want to do higher reps. Go ahead and get 20. It's a good number. Get 20 reps on that, and go ahead and do that two times through. So John's going to go ahead and flip to the other side and repeat that again. Switch legs. Second set. Switch legs. For the side plank with knee drive and leg raise, we're going to get in a side plank position. This is going to be way more advanced than in workout number one. Our side plank now is going to be, we're going to add some movement. First, we're going to get the other arm up. We're going to bring that knee up, drive it up, then go back down, and then do a leg raise. On that leg raise, you want to kind of come backwards slightly, so you're going back toward this way a little bit. So as you raise that leg, you'll notice he's going back. Good. Now, if this is too difficult, as you can see, it can be tough. We're going to start on your knees. One top leg is going to go out, and now your, your, your point is going to be on that knee. It's a shorter point there, and then you'll be able to do it from there. And he's going to do the same thing. Every time the knee goes in and the leg goes up, that's one rep. So John's going to demonstrate 10 reps on each side. You'll notice not only is he working on that hip flexor, and hip abduction strength, glute strength, hip flexor strength, he's got a lot of shoulder stability going on. You'll notice for most of these exercises, you're stabilizing through your shoulder girdle a lot. You're going to need that in a lot of the movements you're going to do out in the field. So you'll see here, this is pretty tough to do. Most of you will want to start on your knees to do it. You're going to flip to the other side. Side plank. You're also working your core. Your, all the muscles on the side of your body, your obliques, and different muscles that are attached to the uh, to your rib cage as well as the, to your iliac crest. So you're going to see him driving the knee up and coming out, driving the knee up and coming out. So the idea on that leg raise is to try to raise it a little further back toward knee, John. There you go. It's a little tougher to do that, but you're going to see John is going to get through this thing. Nice job. other side.
for the resisted helicopter, we're going to go ahead and get a position by grabbing a very light green or yellow or some light resistance tubing, put it around your feet. You're going to go ahead and lie back on your back. You're going to hold the band with each hand, put your fists together, and have your knees in contact with your fists. We're going to go ahead and keep pushing your knees into your hand as you spread the feet apart. Spread the feet apart as much as you can. Control it on the way back a little bit more, John. A little slower coming back. Good. So we really want to push out. Here we're working on, we're working on rotation at the hip or resisted rotation. So we're really working on helping to get strength through while rotating at the hip. And so this is something we work on a lot of mobility. And in this case, we're going to work on stabilizing and strengthening that movement so you're strong throughout that range of motion. For the crab hip lift, we're going to work on activating the glutes. So what we're going to do is instead of lying on the floor on our back to do a hip raise, we're going to do it with our little more shoulder stability and stretching of the shoulders as well. So we're going to have hands behind you, feet on the floor with the knees bent. John's going to go ahead and raise his hips up, squeezing the glutes to try to tighten up the hips. And he's going to come up and down, exhaling as he comes up and going for 15 reps. After he does 15 reps here, he's going to go ahead and do one leg at a time. This will be tough, so we're going to only do 10 per leg and then repeat that circuit with 10 more per leg. And you'll feel that starting to really activate each hip. If you notice one side's a little tougher, go ahead and do extra on that one leg. So now he's going to go to one leg, stabilize on three points here, so a little more balance is involved in doing this. You notice that he's doing a good job keeping his pelvis neutral and level. And the idea is as his other leg is straight, that's also adding some more load to that hip lift. So he's going up nice and high, as high as he can, extending as much as he can without arching at the back. He wants to feel this in the glutes, in the hips, not in the low back. If you're starting to feel in the back, cut down on your reps until you can get to the point where you're feeling it mainly in the glutes, in the hips. So now he's going to do it. Last one. He's going to drive hard. Drive hard. The hips is the power center. This is where getting up from the ground and moving is where all of the power and all of the strength is going to come from. Begin single leg hip extension. Now switch legs. Switch legs. Switch legs. Now for elevator planks, we're going to work on core stability and shoulder stability. And this is a pretty tough exercise and we're going to show you how to do both sides. So first we're going to start down in an elbow plank. We're going to have elbows directly below the shoulders. What, what, what John's going to do is he's going to come up leading with the right hand and then the left. Then he's going to go down leading with the right hand and down to the left. He's going to do that 10 times. So he keeps repeating that, bringing the hand 
back toward the elbow. See how he's moving it backward? Now we're going to show you how we switch. Now that's right, they're going to go to left. Now he's going to go left first, and then left goes down first. You're going to do 10 on that side as well. The idea is to bring that hand back. Notice how he does that. Brings the hand back under the shoulder rather than just leaving it in the same spot it is. And other side. For the side plank up and down and reach through, John's going to go in a side plank position on his elbow. He's going to have his elbow directly under his shoulder, his feet are going to be stacked, or he's going to have one foot in front of the other. Now, if it, and when he comes up and down, just to demonstrate one, he's going to go up and down, and for the second part he's going to do reach throughs. And the reach through looks like this. Now, if this is too difficult, you can bend the bottom knee and the top leg is straight. We'll do the same thing, up and down, and then you'll do your reach throughs. So John's going to demonstrate 10 reps of each, starting on the most difficult version, which is feet stacked and elbow. So he's going to reach up and, he's going to go up and down, working those muscles on the side, obliques and other muscles that are on the side of his um, torso. And this is going to help with carrying uneven loads and with being able to stabilize that torso while moving. Now after he does that, he's going to do his reach throughs. He's going to go through 10 times as well. Now he's got a different force going through the shoulder and through the torso. If it starts to become difficult for him, at any time, if he's feeling tired, he'll go down to his knee and he'll finish that way. So as he's going, as you get better and better, your endurance will improve and you'll be able to stay upright on both feet for longer periods of time. Then we're going to flip to the other side. Same thing, elbow is stacked directly beneath the shoulder. If it starts to get away from you, you're not in good position. This hand is up, so you're pulling the shoulder blade back. You're retracting that shoulder blade, keeping this arm and shoulder in good position as well. Then after 10 of these, you're gonna see him reach through as well. You can take a break, and you can always drop to the knee if it starts to become too difficult. Now John's gonna reach and come up, reach and come up. A lot of shoulder stability going on and mobility through the shoulder blade on the bottom arm and as well as the bottom side, uh, part of the torso. You can see he went ahead and dropped to the knee, which was great because he was starting to get fatigued. And when you get fatigued, you can lose form. I'd rather have you stop and modify or just stop altogether if you begin to lose form. Begin reach throughs. Switch sides. Begin reach throughs. For the prone T-bird and push out with a hold, John's going to go ahead and lie flat on his belly. 
And he's going to have his arms out to the side in a T position with thumbs up. He's going to lift the chest off the ground, keep the feet flat on the ground, and he's going to pull those shoulder blades up together and then back down. He's going to do 20 reps here. Now we're working the posterior chain. This is super important for posture, getting all these muscles in the back strong. The key here is to pull from the lower part of the shoulder blades. Keep the shoulders down so you're not shrugging up here. Once he's done 20 of those, he's going to hold. Now, if it's difficult, you can take a break between each part. He's going to push out. Now he's got his shoulder blades rotating up and down, up and down, getting good movement through the shoulder blades. We're stuck a lot of times in positions on the computer or at the steering wheel. This is going to unlock those things. And you're also getting good back strength here. Tighten up the glutes to keep it tight. He's going to hold for 10 seconds at the end just to make sure he's really strengthening all those muscles in the back with the shoulder blades together. Begin push-outs. Hold. We're now at the fun part. This is the basic strength portion of the workout. And in workout one, we did strength as well. And on those, we didn't load it that heavy. And we basically moved through a horizontal plane of pushing and pulling. And we did upper and lower body movements. In this section, we're gonna do upper and lower body pushing and pulling. This time, we're gonna go vertical, a little more difficult. And we're gonna do vertical pushing and pulling. The equipment you're gonna need is dumbbells or kettlebells. You'll need a medium to light and then a heavier one. You'll also need a band that you can use for the pull-ups to help unweight your body to make it easier for you to do pull-ups. So the first exercise we're gonna do are goblet squats. We're gonna grab a dumbbell. Again, you can do this with a kettlebell. You can hold it like a goblet underneath your chin, elbows in tight, and the, belt, the, the, the dumbbell should be against your body. We're going to go ahead and stand up, then sit down. This gives you a target, and you're going to lift your feet, and then repeat. We're resetting the feet each time so that you have to restabilize your core and work again at coming up from the bottom, from the hole, from a dead position, from a dead stop position, rather than using the existing muscular tension and strength and momentum to do it. So here we are actually using a new rep every single time. And John's gonna do 15 reps here. After he finishes the 15 reps, we're gonna move on to an upper body exercise. So we're gonna alternate upper and lower body. And remember, slow down if you have to. Now we, for, this, for the second one, we're gonna go ahead and take the dumbbell or kettlebell and we're gonna do overhead presses. So we're gonna hold it in that exact same position and we're gonna press straight up and then come down. John's gonna do 15 reps here. And then after his 15 reps, we'll move on to a lower body exercise. But notice that he's trying to extend the arms as high as possible and push without arching the back too much. You're gonna to try to stabilize that back. If you're arching too much, if you're losing form, go to a lighter weight. He's exhaling every time he presses, blowing out and then sitting down. The next thing we're gonna do is a deadlift. And on the deadlift, we talked about in workout one the basic form of the deadlift. Now we're gonna go ahead and implement it with heavier weights. So when we do this, this is again gonna be a reset deadlift. So he's gonna drive his hips back. It's a hip hinge movement. Pick up the weight, put it down, release the weight. Notice that every time he does this, he's having to re-engage his core, having to tighten his core, everything that we just worked out on in the beginning of the workout. 
He's also having to get those legs stretched. He's driving his hips back as far as possible, stretching back in the, in the hamstrings, and using all those pulling muscles. And these are the muscles you use for deceleration when you're going downhill, when you're walking and hiking and moving sideways as well. Very important exercise, often neglected, the posterior chain of the body, the back part. So you'll notice each set, you're coming up without it, and you're coming up with it. You're giving your body a contrast. Then we'll, after we finish that, we're going to do our final upper body exercise, which is going to be pull-ups. So we're going to head on, head on over to the pull-up bar and do that next. Final exercise in the four exercise circuit is pull-ups. Most people can't do pull-ups, but what you can do is use a band. And when you use the band, the thicker the band is, the easier it is to do the pull-up. What we're going to do is we're going to strap the band onto a bar, and they, we do have bands that are made just for pull-ups that'll do this. And then once you have that band on there, we're going to put one knee in there, and that'll unweight you so you can do the pull-ups and do the proper amount of pull-ups. Now, if you cannot do pull-ups at all or don't have access to a bar for your door frame or at the gym, you can go ahead and do pull-downs with this band or any elastic band and just stand there and do your pull-downs this way. So John's going to demonstrate what we do for pull-ups. He's going to go over, put his knee inside the band, grab on with a grip that's about a little wider than shoulder width, and he's going to drop down and come up for 10 pull-ups. If he can't do it, that's not a problem. He'll rest. Out. If he can only do five, he'll stop, and then he'll go ahead and do five more. You want to get the total number of 10. Now, when you're doing all of these, you're going to do three rounds. You go through all four exercises. After those four exercises, you'll repeat the circuit again and repeat it again. Over time, as you get stronger, go up in weight. And as you get up in weight, if you have to drop down from 15 reps down to 12 or 10 reps, you can go ahead and do that. Overhead press. Romanian deadlift resets. pull-ups.
Begin 30 second break. Begin second set. Overhead press. Romanian deadlift resets. pull-ups. Begin 30 second break. Sit to stand goblet squat. overhead press.
Romanian deadlift resets. pull-ups. We finished the strength portion of the workout. Now we're going to move to the functional strength portion. And this is where we're going to have some movements that are going to help you actually be better out in the hunt. This part of the workout actually simulates the motions, movements that you will have to do in the field. You will have to duck under branches. You will have to climb out of street beds. You will have to step up and over logs and rocks. You will have to crawl into position to make your shot. You will have a backpack on your back and a rifle on your shoulder. The first parts of the workouts were to give you the mobility, stability, and strength to do what you came to the field to do. Well, we're gonna start now with bear crawl. So, John's gonna get a position, and he's gonna go ahead and do four different positions. He's gonna go ahead and start bear crawling sideways. He's gonna go forward. He's gonna go sideways. And then he's going to go backward. Backward will be the toughest challenge. And you don't have to go as fast as John, but John's pretty fast. He's done this for a while. And notice his knees are close to the ground. He's low. He's trying to stay real stable and not have his body sway too, too much. After he's done that crawl, he's working on a lot of good. He's going to do twice through that, both directions. He's got a lot of core stability going on, a lot of shoulder stability going on, and a lot of strength happening here. From here, he's going to then reverse directions again. So it's, it's tough, and if at first you can only do one round each way, that's fine. Build up to this. Once he gets back, he's going to come to the back, and we've got steps. He's going to go ahead and do the step which he talked about before, which is going to step up, then he's going to step over, and go back around. Notice how he's going to alternate legs. He's going to step up now, right? down and then over left and then back around and he's going to go with the other leg and on this one you want to make sure that you get 10 reps going each on each leg as you come up and over super important here that you work on going at your pace and go don't try to speed faster than you can handle watch how when he lifts his knee his knee is coming up to his chest when he does that step over, you want to really work the strength of your hip flexors. Knee comes up rather than kicking your butt and trying to swoop your leg around the side. You really want to drive that knee up. Good. And he's going around. Again, you're just walking. Just walking. You're not having to run this thing. So now, John's going to go on to his duck under. So this is what we talked about getting under branches. So now he's going to go under, slide under 10 times each way. Notice how when he goes under, he's getting good clearance and sliding. He's bending those knees, sliding that foot under, keeping his eyes forward. You always want to 
think about what you're doing in the field, but you have to see what's in front of you. You have to know where you're going and know the surroundings and everything going on. So as he goes under, he's keeping his eyes up. He's not looking down on his feet the whole time. Good, and as he slides, you're gonna notice a lot of those movements of strength, mobility, and stability we worked on in the beginning are all coming here all at once that he's gonna to have to use and put together in this functional circuit. Switch. Switch. Begin 15 second break. Begin second set. Switch.
switch. Next is the single leg balance windmill. You've just finished two rounds of the functional training circuit. You're pretty winded and you've moved in every single way, you used all the strength, stability, and mobility that you had at the beginning of the workout. Now it's time to work on some static balance with motion through the torso. John's going to tell them a little bit about why that's important. So as hunters, we've put our bodies in shape to go, go on our hunt. We're in the field. We have ducked under, stepped up, stepped over numerous times to get into position for the stock. Now we have crawled into the position, uh, the position for our shot and we're ready to take our shot. We're tired, we're fatigued, but we have to steady ourselves. This exercise is designed to simulate what you're going to encounter in the field right up to the point where you've made your stock and you're getting yourself stable to make your shot. So uh, uh, we're going to have John put one foot in front of the cone, unlock his knee slightly, bend his torso at 45 degrees, arms out to the side, and he's going to rotate his torso and tap. Tap lightly or right above. Now if he puts his foot down, that's fine. You, you, the idea is here, as you're rotating, you're going to create sway in your body. You're going to have to stabilize, put all your weight over that stabilizing leg and then you're going to switch legs. One side will be easier than the other. If it is, work on that side that's tougher a little bit more. Do extras on that side. See, it's fine to put your foot down if you have to. Don't just stop and get frustrated. Just tap your foot each time you have to. And we're going to go ahead and do this two times because as you do it the second time, you will get better as your nervous system gets educated in the movement. Switch legs. Begin 15 second break. Switch legs. Begin 15 second break. Switch legs. Well, that completes workout number two. 
In workout two, just to recap, we started with a lot of more advanced ground-based mobility and stability work. That work helped to open up your hips, open up your shoulders, open up everything in your body, your ankles, everywhere that you're going to need to move optimally in the field. We also worked on stabilization and activation so that you're strong through those new ranges of motion that you attain through that workout. We then moved on to strength basic upper and lower body push and pull strength. We did three sets of that to get you good and strong in those planes of motion. But then we went ahead and worked on all the planes of motion using your own body weight, stepping up, over, around, and under, all kinds of things so you could simulate what was going to go on in the field. And we ended it with a single leg balance routine where you can learn how to steady yourself in a fatigued state. Fit for Alaska is three workouts designed to get you ready for hunting and a big game adventure. I had a Rocky Mountain elk hunt come up before I had been through the whole program. I'd only been through workout two. And let me tell you, workout two was sufficient to get me through that hunt. It was a 10,000 feet of elevation, thousands of feet of ascending and descending, climbing every day with a pack and a rifle. And the workout got me in shape for that hunt. That concludes workout two.